Lots of concepts in pitch class set theory are best viewed along a sliding scale of concreteness or abstractness. A concept like pitch, for example, is very concrete, while pitch class is somewhat more abstract. We can perform a pitch, but we can't really perform a pitch class. We've seen similar examples in the intervallic realm. Ordered pitch intervals are associated with a very specific sound, for example, plus 15. Unordered pitch class intervals, that is, interval class, are less vivid or real. A basic concept in pitch class set theory is that these levels of concreteness and abstractness encompass not only pitch and interval, but groups of pitches and pitch classes as well. These groups are called sets, and the vast majority of the time we'll be working with pitch class sets, which are usually designated by enclosing the set's members in braces. Sometimes analysts write each member of the set separated by a comma. We have already seen pitch class sets, although we haven't been calling them that. When we extract a group of notes from a passage of music and put them in normal order, that group of notes is a pitch class set. As we've seen, one useful way of looking at a lot of post-tonal music is by studying the transpositional and inversional relationships between pitch class sets. In this short example from Bartok's Subject and Reflection, two seemingly different pentachords occur at the same time. If we do the math, we find that these are inversionally related by T8i. Later in the same movement, Bartok initiates a new formal section with this. We hear the right and left hands performing these two pitch class sets, which, you guessed it, are also inversionally related, this time by T6i. But it doesn't stop there. The two sets in the right hand also bear a relationship with one another. T5. And the two sets in the left hand bear the same T5 relationship. Okay, so what does all this mean? It means that these four sets all share the same collection of intervals. Remember how we recognize major and minor triads? Regardless of voicing, inversion, or transposition, we still hear their stability and consonance. Because when you break them down, every major or minor triad contains the same intervals. A major third, a minor third, and a perfect fifth. Major triads are transpositionally related to one another, while major and minor triads are inversionally related to one another. The same observation applies in Bartok's Subject and Reflection. The four pitch class sets we've just examined all have the same intervallic content, and that's why we can find these transpositional and inversional relationships among them. This means they all belong to the same set class. All pitch class sets that are transpositionally and inversionally related belong to the same set class. We've already seen how this is true of major and minor triads. But because there can be so many ways a set class could show up, we need a standard way to categorize them. Enter prime form, a standard ordering and transposition of pitch classes that represents all transpositions and inversions of a set class. We follow a five-step process to put a pitch class set in its prime form. Put the pitch class set in normal order, transpose it so that the first pitch class is zero, invert the results from step two, any inversion will work, and put the result in normal order. Transpose it so that the first pitch class is zero, and then compare the results of steps two and four. Prime form is the most compact version and should be written between parentheses. Let's try applying this process to the motive from Bartok's subject and reflection. The pitch class set as it first appears in the right hand is 10, 0, 3, 2, 5. We need to put this in normal order, moving clockwise while avoiding the biggest gap. This means starting at 10. Next, we must transpose the set so that it begins with 0. To transpose 10 to 0, we should use the operation T2. Okay, so this might be the prime form of our set, but it might not. Sometimes the inversion of a set yields the more compact ordering. So now we must invert the set to find out if that is the case. When we invert at T0i, we get the set 0, 10, 8, 7, 5. In order to compare it to our other possible prime form, we need to put it in normal order and then transpose to 0. Avoiding the biggest gap, we start at pitch class 5 and go around clockwise, yielding a normal order of 5, 7, 8, 10, 0. 
To turn pitch class 5 into pitch class 0, we'll have to transpose by 7 semitones. Doing so results in 0, 2, 3, 5, 7. Finally, we should compare the results of steps 2 and 4 to see which result is more compact. There's not a lot of difference, is there? So how do we know which to choose? We measure the distances from 0. Both orderings have these intervals from 0 present. But they differ in one respect. The inverted version contains a smaller interval than the original does. This makes the inverted version the most compact. Therefore, the prime form of this pitch class set is 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, which is indicated by the parentheses. Now, if that seemed like a long and involved process, that's because it is. But it's useful to know exactly how all of this works. But now, let's look at another way that you might find easier, faster, and less likely to cause mistakes. Start by arranging a clock face for yourself. Identify the pitch classes of the set and find the largest gap. So, we can either proceed clockwise from 10 or counterclockwise from 5. Visually, we should be able to see pretty clearly that starting at 5 packs smaller intervals closer to the beginning of the order than if we started at 10, so we should move counterclockwise from 5. Anytime we move clockwise around the circle, we are choosing normal order. And any time we move counterclockwise, we are choosing the inversion of the normal order. Now all that's left is to transpose to zero, and the easiest way to do so is to start with whichever end we decided we should start with in the last step, in this case, pitch class five. Now, regardless of what pitch class you start with, rename it zero, and then count around the circle until you reach the end of your set. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Thus, the prime form of this set is 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, which we put in parentheses to indicate that this is prime form. This means that all four of those sets we first examined were only different versions of set class 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, just inverted and transposed to varying degrees. Analytically, the concept of set class is useful because it can show coherence in a composition. Bartok's Subject and Reflection, for example, uses the 02357 set class almost exclusively, although it appears in many transpositions and inversions. Theoretically, the concept is useful because it provides a prism through which we can begin to study the possibilities provided to us by the 12 pitch class universe. For almost 500 years, composers mostly used only a small subset of these possibilities, triads, seventh chords, etc. Set class lists reveal all of the other possibilities. They also give us hints as to why tonal composers used only a small portion of them and suggest entire worlds organized through other means. Fortunately for us, we don't need to create such a list because others already have. Most of these set class lists are organized similarly. Set classes that have the same number of notes in them, the same cardinality, are grouped together. Trichords are listed together, as are nonachords, and so on. Prime form for each set class is shown in parentheses. The interval class vector next to each set class's prime form is particularly valuable. Think of it as a numeric representation of the intervallic flavor of each set class. Interval class vectors have six digits placed between angled brackets. Each placeholder represents an interval class, so the first blank keeps track of every instance of interval class 1 in the set class. The second blank keeps track of every instance of interval class 2 in the set class, and so forth, all the way up to interval class 6. Remember that there is no interval class higher than interval class 6. To see how this works, let's consider set class 037, which is the set class of major and minor triads. We can determine how many of each interval class this set class contains by checking every intervallic relationship in the set. 0 to 3 is 3 semitones, and 0 to 7 is 7 semitones, which, you should recall, is the inversion of 5 semitones and thus falls in with IC5. These are the easy interval classes to spot, but don't forget about this one, the interval class from 3 to 7, which is 4 semitones. Because this set class has such a low cardinality, we've accounted for all the intervallic relationships. We fill in the other placeholders with zeros, since this set class contains no instances of interval classes 1, 2, or 6. Therefore, the interval class vector of 037 is 001110. 
We can also confirm our results by checking a set class list. And it appears we calculated the interval class vector correctly. This was a simple example. The more notes in a set class, the more intervallic relationships there will be. And this is why you can see all the placeholders filled with higher digits in the interval class vectors for known accords.